like the quickest synopsis and the most proficient and most accurate thing that I can offer you with regards to this information, inshallah. What I want to do is just emphasize on this. Our deen is preserved with a, a particular system. It was systemized. We knew that the death of the Prophet will eventually reach us. And once it reached us, we had to figure out the way to continue the legacy and how to carry it on. And this is something that it started in Mecca and spread it the entire earth. No matter how much uh, wash down, they're trying to wash down the history of Islam, we have a strong, strong, very strong history. And as me and Amir Ismail were talking about it this morning, we were talking about the situation with relations to indigenous African American people here in America in Islam. If you take the people, you take the Islam away from the people, a lot of the people don't know their particular history. History is something is like it's it's like a it's it's like a self igniting candle. When the flame starts to go low, you ever watch it before the candle burns out? You know the flame the flame real high and then it goes out. Well, with this candle that we that we call Islam, I mean um, I'm sorry with with history. See, we're people that's burning out. We go by what we see. We don't know about anything what happened before us. And then with the things that we do, most of it is either negative or it has some kind of spin on it. And even if you look at today, when people uh, recognize or align themselves with anything uh, pertaining to African history, a lot of times you look, they'll talk about the Kemet people, things like this, and a lot of that is, is establishing based upon a lot of idol worship and paganism. Some people hold on to some of the uh, common beliefs because they don't know anything else connecting them back to you know, Bilal Sudan. I don't like using the word Africa. Africa is a colonized word. It's a word that they that they've given. You know, they stole you from your land and give you redefinition and understanding everything, changed everything for you. So I'd rather call it what the Africans themselves called it. They called it Bilal Sudan. They called it the land of the blacks. Mm. Black lands. So our connection, we kind of like got a missing match. You'll find this in the Muslim Muslim community. And then you have the unleashed, the, the group that's unleashed, you know, that's backed up and, and supported by oil money in the Saudi regime coming to you saying that we are the traditional Islam. And really their objective is even though they say a lot, oh, we love the Prophet Muhammad, them, they say this a lot, but really what they do is they, they really want to do the opposite. You ever been around someone that does something so much that you start disliking the thing that you love? They are those individuals. They come in and they talk about the Prophet Sallallahu so much and what they do is innately, you don't even realize it, they're actually turning you to hate his sunnah. That's the whole objective. It goes back to a statement that al Haj Malik Shabazz made, Rahim Allah, Malcolm X as you know him as, he said that there's only two things that's going to work for black people in America. He said one is Islam and Asabiya, right? Tribalism. They have to have it. Why is that? Now most people say, oh, tribalism is bad. What is tribalism according to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He said that tribalism is when you help your, your people in wrongdoing. You know, and I'm going to give you a perfect example of Asabiya. We do it every day. My family has a fight with another family. My son may have been the aggressor in the fight, and I know he's wrong, but guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to back him up anyway. And you ain't going to do nothing to me. You want to do something, we can get down and do something too. Instead of us trying to fix the problem and amend the wrong, my son stole, stole $2 from your son. So instead of me getting the $2 back and giving it back to you, I said, now I don't know what you're talking about. And I, and I know my son got the money. This is Asabia. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to help your son now, listen, son, you know, you need to learn from people that look like you and so on and so forth, you have an important role in Islam. You need to know this, right? You don't need to just think that you know, Islam is only real with, with uh, uh, non-blacks because that's how most of us think. Because you know, being stripped of your, your history and your identity, you always put your vision 
outside of what's what's immediately in front of you or what you have in your own history. If you ever go around the world, everyone around the world can trace themselves back to either a Sahaba, right, a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu or the Prophet Sallallahu himself, or one of the tribes that was amongst the Prophet Sallallahu right? Like for instance, they say that the lineage of Sa'id ibn Abi Waqqas, Sa'id ibn Abi Waqqas, he was a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu They say that he has lineage that traces back into China. And there's Chinese people, and I met some who make their claim of their lineage based off of Sa'id ibn Abi Waqqas. And it's something that they proud and pride themselves on. But we're from the descendants of Sa'id ibn Abi Waqqas. Right? Uh, Salman al-Farsi, he wasn't, he, what, he was Persian. Al-Farsi, he's Persian, that's what it's indicated. He can say that's his lineage. But why is it with us, if we change our name, Khalil Abdullahi, no, I want you to be Khalil Ibn Pattyfoot now. Right? <laughs> now you can't call yourself Abdullahi, they ain't what your daddy named you. Our daddy didn't even have that same name. The same thing was Malcolm said when he was being interviewed one time. His father didn't even know what his name. He said that name that he's buried is a slave master name. We're trying to amputate that. These people are teaching us to go back to that. Now, it's a, I'm telling you, it's all relevant, everything I'm saying right now. It's a lineage, and it's an empowerment. So when you have these other movements that's masquerading, coming in, and telling you that they're the true Islam, and then when you see them, everybody's just running away from each other like somebody just dropped an odor, there's something wrong with that Islam that they're promoting. Your objective changed. Now you're no longer concerned with giving people and calling people to Islam. Now you're concerned with beating each other up in the masjid. Mm -hmm. So that means that what happened? The objective has changed somewhere. So with, with that being mentioned, it's very important what we're talking about now. This past that's laid down for us to follow to follow. And to be in to be on the correct way and following the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is the objective. The companions, they stayed around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And no other Prophet had this like this. They had helpers, they had disciples, but they never had anyone the same way that our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had with the with his companions. Right? Now, the complexion of the companions. Is it, is it like a, a, a spiritual relevancy? No. For us, it's a moral relevancy. Why is that? Because that boosts our, that, that boosts our enthusiasm for Islam. To show you, say, hey, blacks had something to do with Islam. But if, if it's really a one's concern, if you find the majority of them were people of color. They were all people of color. When you read their, their description, their biography, Ali ibn Abi Talib was as dark, was darker than me. Umar ibn Khattab, you're going to find two reports. Some of them say white. But he wasn't white. Everyone knows that he was dark skinned. So all of these things. So that should boost the moral pride of us as a people. Secondly, they loved the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu so much. They loved him that they recorded everything that he did. They memorized everything that they did that he did. Even when he washed, even when he washed himself for prayer, when he made you do, some of them even made a mistake and drunk the water. You see, that's how much they loved them, and that is the recording, the recording of these. So now, to this day, now you know how to make wudu properly, because there's not one ayah that you could go in the Quran and say that this is how you're supposed to make wudu. You only know how to make wudu because of the recorded hadiths, right, of the Prophet Sallallahu from the companion. They said that he made wudu like this. He washed his limbs this many times. He washed his limbs that many times. And etc. etc. So this is how you got now what is known as the sunnah. And it's very relevant. It plays that relevancy. As time develops, you have to develop a methodology. There always have to be learned men and women of the community. Firstly, Islam is the, the very hallmark. And it's like a, 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 a stamp or a beacon for intelligence. For a person of intelligence. It's, the, it's the, the center of intellect. Right? Even if you look at it, let's go back 20 years ago, you wouldn't even run into a Muslim in the streets, right? Without him enlightening you or something. There's something. Nowadays, you see Muslims in the street, they don't even have a word to tell you. 
They walk right past you. They walk right past the non-Muslim. They don't even mean anything. Matter of fact, they have more animosity now towards those who ain't Muslim without even having a dialogue. 20 years ago, you could at least have a dialogue and be mad as hell when you walk away from the person like, Mel, keep telling you Jesus ain't God. At least you had that back in the day. Now you just look at a person and assume that he believes that. These Catholics, I hate them, they all going to hell. You ain't even talk to them. And this isn't the way that the prophet says someone. Now when you look at them and think about Medina, what happened in Medina? What happened, I'm, like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say in Medina. What happened in Mecca? The Muslims were there. They were trying to hide their faith. But they couldn't hide it for so long. And then they start telling people about their faith that the family started hating them. Now think about it. We're acting like the disbelievers of Mecca today. We're hating our family with no dialogue, even though we're Muslim. That doesn't make sense. In Mecca, the Muslims were hated because they uh, believed in a different belief other than what the, the average everyday people did, right? Even though they still interacted amongst them, they still tried to be nice to them, they still tried to have uh, functions with them, and all of these things, and then their family started persecuting them, felt embarrassed that they were breaking tradition and so on and so forth. Now today, 2015, where we claim we have so much information, what are we doing today? We hate our family, we cut them off, we don't have nothing to say to them, and we ostracize them because they're not Muslim, but even though we ain't doing a good job of calling them to Islam. It's backwards. There is a methodology. The only thing you can do is follow that particular path. Now, what's my point? I'm getting up to the credibility of the companions, that they were that credible. And before the death of the Prophet ﷺ, before he died, he made a statement. And he gave virtue to these generations, which in, in, in these, these generations is what you find is the preservation of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, he said, Khayru khurni, thumma ladina yalunahum, thumma ladina yalunahum. He said that the best generation is my generation, meaning the companions. Why is that? They witnessed the Quran being revealed. They fought side by side with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? They fought, they fought even after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to keep to keep the legacy to preserve Islam. Right? Then he said, Then those who followed them. Now these men went and they met with the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they learned from them. And they took from them, and they said, look, I'm going to pass this thing on, and I'm not going to deviate from it, not one bit. And they passed it to the next generation. And then those who come after them. Now, within these, within these three generations, there will always be in every society or generation, there's always prominent individuals. People of virtue. Some people are more virtuous than others. And they become known. Right? Like when we always talk about Islam, a lot of people know who Umar is. Right? They all, oh, Umar, Umar, Umar. Umar was one of the ten people that was promised paradise. Even though he was on his way to kill the prophet, say something. Right? So that just goes to show us that we never know what's going to be the outcome of someone's final ending. You never know what's going to be the outcome. So never take your position for granted. Don't think just because you're Muslim, you might die Muslim. So what you need to do when you're Muslim is work like hell not to die like another. That's what you have to do, right? Even from the time you're young. And a lot of the time, and even older and younger, and this is the beauty of Islam, when you start reading the history, everyone played a part. Everyone was very important. No one was insignificant. The young man was just as, as relevant as as much as the older man. Everyone had a part to play. No, there was no, there was not that kind of status. So anyway, so this, the, the first generation was the one who learned directly from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi the generation that came after that was those who learned directly from the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu The ones after that are the ones who learned directly from the, uh, the, those who, the followers of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Those three generations, they're very relevant to Islam and that is when the entire Islam was codified. After that, after that we follow, we follow those, those, that three, that pattern, that model right there. That is how you find 
your Islam.